Hello church family, my name is Yesenia and I'm one of the pastors here at the Wayworld Outreach Church. I'm so excited because today is our final devotional of our 30 day growth challenge and you made it this far, congratulations. Yesterday we heard an amazing teaching on James chapter 5 verses 13 through 15 and today we're going to hear the final words in James chapter 5. But before we do so, let's go ahead and pray in. God, I thank you so much for my brother and sister that's watching right now, God. I pray that you would speak to them, speak to us, God, as we dive into your word. Give us revelation, give us wisdom, God, and help us grow today from this study. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We're going to start at verse 16. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was just as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then he prayed again, and the sky sent down rain, and the earth began to yield its crops. We're going to go ahead and stop right there. So today we're going to be talking about three types of prayers that we find in the final words of James. Number one, the prayer of confession. Number two, the prayer of passion. And number three, the prayer of intercession. So let's start with number one, the prayer of confession. The word confess means to acknowledge, to own or admit what is true, to plead guilty of something or to expose your sin. So in verse 16, it says, confess your sins to each other and pray so that you may be healed. Another word for confess means to say the same thing. In other words, to identify it for what it truly is, which is sin. And so based on this scripture, there's some benefits to confession. And here are a few of them. Number one, it, it brings healing and freedom both physically and spiritually. It also frees us and removes all hindrances in our lives. And lastly, it breaks the power of secret sin in our lives. So let's go ahead and pause for a moment. So this scripture here is not talking to non-believers. It is talking to you and I, believers in the faith. And so let's not be a pretend Christian that acts like we got everything together when we really don't. Let's acknowledge what, 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 what you're going through, whether that's unforgiveness, whether that's um, anger, whether that's lust, whether that's anxiety, whether that's depression, whatever it is, confess it so that you may be healed. I believe there's a reason that God said, confess your sins to one another and not necessarily to him, God. Yeah, there's going to be a time for that. He's going to be just to forgive us but there's a power when we confess our sins to one another so I encourage you if there's something that you're dealing with today confess it to a brother or sister confess it to your DG leader confess it at the altar confess it to a pastor so that you may be healed because God wants to heal you today amen so let's move on to the prayer of passion so again in verse 16 it says the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results Elijah was just as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. So who's considered righteous based on this scripture? It's those who have faith in God, those who have put their faith in God. And so this is how God wants us to pray. It's earnestly, which means resulting from or showing sincere or intense conviction with great passion, seriousness, and zeal and intention purpose or effort. And I love how it says Elijah was just as human as we are. We're in the same playing field. And so that means that we have the same access that Elijah had back then to stop the rain or to make it rain. We have that same access and power in our prayers. And so I encourage you today, don't give up on what you're praying for. Whatever it is, continue praying. If you've never read the story of Elijah, it can be found in 1 Kings chapter 17 through 19, and I encourage you to read it. But it says that when Elijah prayed, he didn't just pray once and that was it, and the rain came or the rain stopped. He prayed, it says that he was in, his head was in his knees on the ground, and he was praying earnestly. He was praying with passion, and that is how God wants us to pray today. So whatever it is, continue praying, continue believing, because God hears you, and like the word says you it will produce great power to produce wonderful results amen 
So now let's take a look at the final, final words of James found in verse 19 and 20. It says, My dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you has wandered away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back from wandering will save the person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. So here the scripture is talking about those who have backslid, those who have wandered away from the truth, that once knew the truth but had, have wandered away. And so God is using us to bring back those sinners, right? And so that leads me to my last prayer, which is the prayer of intercession. So what is intercession? It's prayer and petition or entreaty in favor to another to intervene between parties with the view of reconciling differences. And so how do we bring the, the sinner back is through prayer. We see here in 1 Timothy 2.1, it says, I urge you first of all to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. So that is one way that we can bring the sinner back. And so if whoever it is that you know that has wandered away from the truth, you have the power to pray and intercede on their behalf. And lastly, how do we win a sinner back? Is through love, which our last scripture is uh, Galatians 6.1 that says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. So how do we love them is by gently and humbly helping them go back onto the right path. And so we learned about the power of prayer that is available to you and I. So let's go ahead and walk in it. Let's go ahead and practice what we learned today. Amen. I pray that you are encouraged by this teaching. And if you found it helpful, go ahead and comment something that you learned, something that stood out to you and share it with a friend. Make sure you like it, share it with a friend and let's make sure that we get the word out there. Amen. Before you go, I would love to pray with you. God, I thank you so much for today's word, God. I thank you, Lord, that there is freedom, there is liberty that's found in your word, that's found when we confess what we're going through, God. And I pray that we would be able to pray just like Elijah, God, with his faith, with his passion, God. And Lord, I also ask, God, that you would give us your heart for those who are lost, God, that, God, we will continue interceding on their behalf, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen. God bless you.